Ladies and gentlemen of the Malacanang Press Corps, good afternoon. His Excellency Benigno S. Aquino III, President of the Philippines. Mr. President. Okay. Good afternoon. The Executive Secretary and the Chief Presidential Legal Counsel have completed the review of the recommendations of the Incident Investigation and Review Committee report. The review was undertaken within three basic parameters. First, the facts enumerated in the IIRC report. Second, the possible criminal and administrative sanctions that could be imposed under the law. Third, whether the cases to be filed will prosper. Okay. The review also defines concepts such as reckless imprudence, simple imprudence, criminal negligence, neglect of duty, simple neglect of duty, gross incompetence, mistakes in judgment, mistakes rather in judgment that are offenses under the law and punishable if proven. This having been done, I am ordering that the following actions be taken. Refer to the National Police Commission, the NAPOLCOM, the filing of appropriate charges against Police Super Chief Superintendent Rodolfo Magtibay for gross incompetence and serious neglect of duty under Section 2, Rule 21 of the PNP Uniform Rules. Refer to the NAPOLCOM also the filing of appropriate charges against Police Director Leocado Locadio Santiago Jr. for less grave neglect of duty under the same provision of the PNP Uniform Rules. Refer further to the NAPOLCOM, the filing of appropriate charges against Police Superintendent Orlando Yebra for neglect of duty under the same rule. Refer to the NAPOLCOM, the filing of appropriate charges against Police Chief Inspector Santiago Pascual III for gross incompetence under Section 2 again, Rule 21, PNP Uniform Rules. The initiation of administrative proceedings against Manila Mayor Alfredo Lim for misconduct in office and simple neglect under Section 60 of the Local Government Code. His case will be referred to the Department of Interior and Local Government for appropriate proceedings. The initiation of administrative proceedings and investigation of Deputy Ombudsman Emilio Gonzalez III by the Office of the President for neglect of duty and or inefficiency in the performance of official duty under Rule 14, Section 22 of the Omnibus Rules Implementing Book 5 of Executive Order 292 and other pertinent civil service laws, rules, and regulations, and gross misconduct under Section 3 of the anti graft and Crop Practices Act, refer the IRC report in turn to the House of Representatives for appropriate action in the case of Ombudsman Mercedes, Merceditas Gutierrez. Further, I instruct the Department of Justice to expedite the resolution of the serious disobedience and conspiracy in illegal detention cases currently lodged against SPO2 Gregoria Mendoza and to instruct the Manila Police District to file appropriate complaints for illegal possession of firearms and serious illegal detention as an accomplice of his brother, Rolando Mendoza. In the case of media, we view media as an effective partner in providing checks and balances and to this end, allies in our goal of good governance. We will continue to champion freedom of the press as guaranteed in our Constitution. However, in this case, freedom was not tempered with appropriate responsibility, specifically in the behavior of Mr. Michael Rogas and Erwin Tulfo of RMN. Rogas interfered in the negotiations and effectively aided and supported the hostage taker by giving him a platform to air his demands. Tulfo, by his own admission, violated police instructions. Their behavior was irresponsible, bordering on the criminal. We understand that the major networks have taken action already to discipline errant reporters and are reviewing and revising guidelines for coverage in emergency situations. These are encouraging signs that media is taking responsibility for its actions. We expect this kind of uh, unprofessional behavior on the part of Rogas and Tulfo not to be repeated again. Or we would be compelled to ask Congress for appropriate laws to protect the safety of the public, our security forces, and the media itself. I have also admonished Secretaries Robredo and Undersecretary Puno for failing to uphold the high standards of performance that I demand from them. I sat them down last night. Then the outcome was a commitment for more professionalism starting with their acting as one. I pledged from the very start that there would be accountability. The purpose of the review was to find the viable legal actions which can be taken against the concerned parties. In addition, as you know, 
we are taking steps to enhance our ability to respond to future crises. We are redrafting the 10-year-old Malacanang Crisis Manual written in the year 2000 to make it more responsive to not only hostage situations but other crises that we may face in the future. We have also established a presidential situation room so that actions by the government in crisis situations can be more coordinated and will be swifter. We're also in the process of reviewing the capabilities of our security forces to see what may be done with regard to training and procurement of equipment. I've also instructed that the recommendations of the IRC and the review by the Executive Secretary and the Chief Presidential Legal Counsel be posted on the official Gazette website as promised. I am now ready to take your questions. Mr. President, the first question will be from Mia Gonzalez of Business Mirror. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, Mia. Sir, sir considering that Malacanang put a lot of time and effort into these decisions, do you expect the public, the people of Hong Kong, the victims, and the Chinese government to accept them? I'm hoping that that will be the case. Again, um, we want to be fair to all parties concerned. Processes were ob religiously observed. And at the end of the day, there was an evaluation as to what can be preferred in terms of corrective action. Um, the, I will ask them to also to provide with you, well, it will be posted in the Gazette, but you can get and secure copies. There was a, a very lengthy um, explanation of all of the legal concepts. The bottom line is, you know, one would not want to file charges that one knows from the get-go will not prosper. That will just be taking up much of the court's time, which can be utilized to effect a better conviction rate for cases that can prosper. Sir, just a follow-up. Sir, the news uh, case ni Mr. Rogas and Mr. Tulfo, you made a statement that you would be compelled to support uh, measures in Congress that restrict if coverage. If they is, can, we, can this be taken as a warning? Mia, I think I explained it already before. Niba? Parabang, look at Mr. Tulfo's case. And again, by his own words, he was told by the police not to. He proceeded to do so. So is that responsible? In the case of Mr. Rogas, specifically at the portion where it was getting really, really tense, and he was pressuring Captain Mendoza to take, parang to make a decision. Ano na po ang gagawin niya? I think it's the exact quote. No? And he said it several times, only to realize at some further point that he was uh, inflaming the hostage taker. That, I think, also falls under the purview of really irresponsible journalism. Now, the KBP, amongst other entities, and even those who are not members, have already undertaken to they want to review their own conduct of ethics, their code of ethics, rather. They have already disciplined erring members. Some are just now coming up with their own code of ethics. This is helpful science. No? You, you, are, you are torn between two obligations. One is freedom of the press. As you know, the Constitution specifically says, laws abridging the freedom of the press will not be passed. You know? But at the same time, freedom, as we have all been taught, has certain limitations. So we are hoping no, that uh, like any evolving piece of law, this code of ethics will become firmer and firmer, whereby responsibilities temper freedoms. The next question will be from Maricel Halili of Channel 5. Sir, magandang hapon po. Sir, uh, hindi po yata nabanggit dito sa mga <coughs> possible na masampahan ng kaso si General Versosa. Ano pong mangyayari sa kanya, sir? General Versosa is already retired, number one. Number two, you will note that yung, if you will read uh, the treaties prepared by my lawyers, yung there has to be a specific uh, law violated. First, the law has to exist. It was violated, then you can put the sanctions. Okay. In the case of General Versosa, the manual that was in place at that point in time does not contain a provision of when a local crisis situation should be elevated to an, the national leadership no? and by whom. Those are some of the weaknesses of the current manual. Yung early on, it was a, the threat comes from a solitary gunman. The decision was made to not put in higher officials so that the demands, will, which were impossible already to begin with, will not even be made greater and more impossible, and hence increase the tension. So General Versosa proceeded to talk to the parties concerned, specifically Magtibay and Santiago, and proceeded to carry out his other functions while monitoring the events. So that seems to be in order. Siguro, if I can liken the situation to myself, 
nobody has said that I should have dropped uh, all the other stuff that I was doing that day. Amongst them, I was conferring with Secretary Ona with regards to the dengue situation. I was conferring in turn with Secretary Abad with regards to the budget message that had to be delivered on that same day. There was an oath-taking ceremony of a multitude of uh, appointees who should be seated already in the respective offices and performing the services needed by our people. So if we will, we will say that uh, General Versosa was not physically present in that area and should have taken control of it, you know, I'm not exactly sure that the crisis manual dictates that. And in fact, the review says that there is no law that we can see uh, and no rule or regulation that would merit uh, an administrative case. So at this point in time, perhaps no, one can say that he should have meddled even without the appropriate authority specific, no, specifically mentioned in a situation that was deemed under control until the situation deteriorated late in the afternoon. Sir, pardon me for asking this, but uh, Yusek Puno is uh, somehow controversial right now. Mm -hmm. So after po ng decision ng uh, sa review po ni na ES and CPLC kung anong gagawin kay Yusek Puno, uh, don't you think it will affect the credibility of the report? Babalik tayo ulit, Marisa Dosano, eh, sa issue. Meron ba siyang binayulate sa lahat ng mga patakaran o batas na umiral po sa ating bansa? And uh, after the review, we cannot find the same. No. Yung, there is a standard of performance that I expect from him and also from Secretary Robredo. This has not been demonstrated. That's why I sat them down last night. And in effect, I laid down the law. These are the things that I want both of you to start doing. First and foremost is that you act as one. There is an end to if any bickering possible. You redefine the processes whereby you interact and come up with a better working relationship so that you are effective in all of the missions that have been tasked to the DILG. You know, it's not really just police matters or fire protection or the BJMP, diba? Yung, when I was in America, there was an issue with uh, the relocation in the North Triangle area. That was, the local government is tasked under UDA you know, to either approve or disapprove in demolitions. You know, that is one of the priorities I assigned to Secretary Robredo also. There is a, and other matters on Virgin and the political that were also not attended to. So, given their performance previously, given their current performance, I told them specifics you know, of items that I have been really displeased with. And we finished the meeting last night with firm commitments on changes that are forthcoming. Obviously, it goes hand in hand that the changes promised do not come. Now, then there will be um, issues that will be threshed out. Now, there will be sanctions that will met, be meted out for either or both of them. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Joyce Pañares of Manila Standard today. Sir, good afternoon. Sir, uh, given the diplomatic impact of uh, the hostage incident, uh, should these cases be prioritized by NAPOLCOM and how actively will you be pushing your allies or friends in Congress uh, with regard to the case of the Ombudsman? Well, uh, the case of the Ombudsman cannot be filed at this point in time because there is a one-year ban in between filings against the Ombudsman. And as you know, there is already a pending um, pleading di ba? Before, the, before Congress. But that will be there because they are the only body that is tasked by the Constitution and authorized by the Constitution to handle such a matter. Yung, the, the central issue, if I'm not mistaken, if I remember correctly, um, they rendered a decision there was a motion for reconsideration. The motion had to be acted upon five days after the filing. Nine months after, it's still a pending motion, effectively denying Captain Mendoza uh, access to higher courts no, and to other bodies that could have given him his day in court. Uh, 